All right, guys. So final push, cycle number five, the sulfur cycle. If you're nearing the end, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on the sulfur cycle, simply because it has not really been emphasized uh, by the college board, but there are some important bits we're going to get to here. So first of all, our major res reservoirs of sulfur include the atmosphere, rocks, soil, biomass, ocean, and of course, soft fossil fuels will come in there a little bit too. All right. Uh, now. The contribution of rocks to soil in the form of our sulfur compounds, like with the phosphorus cycle, we've got some erosion. So uh, one thing about sulfur is it's what we call the universal contaminant. It's, it's kind of in everything. It's really hard to find a substance that doesn't have at least some sulfur uh, uh, impurities in it. Okay? Most of our rocks contain sulfurs, some more than others, right? But through the process of erosion, right, we contribute some sulfur to our soil, and then that soil to biomass link, like it is with uh, the phosphorus and the nitrogen cycle, we call it assimilation. All right, and then biomass back to the soil can occur through decomposition. All right, and decomposition can also contribute some biomass back to the atmosphere. It just kind of depends on what type of bacteria uh, is involved and uh, the conditions present. So we can return sulfur back to the soil through the decomposition. We can return sulfur from biomass back to the atmosphere, also through uh, some types of decomposition. So uh, some bacteria emit like a hydrogen sulfide or a dimethyl sulfide. Okay, um, now from the soil to the ocean. I have to go a different color here. All right, we get runoff. Sorry about my arrows here. So runoff can contribute some sulfur to the ocean, as can acid precip. Okay, now when I talk about acid precipitation, um, I already told you guys back in the carbon cycle that uh, water picks up a little bit of carbon dioxide and when that carbon dioxide dissolves into our rainwater, uh, some of it will form a carbonic acid which lowers the pH a little bit. Um, the sulfur compounds in the atmosphere that contribute to acid precipitation, right? So we give it a, a little symbol SOX for our various sulfur oxides. Okay, uh, and those when dissolved in water, right? So sulfur, trioxide, dioxide, when dissolved in water, they can go through some reactions to form a sulfuric acid. The H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, right? So when you hear about actual acid rain, um, the most common culprit is uh, an excess of sulfur oxide to the atmosphere, which then can contribute to the formation of sulfuric acid, much stronger acid, by the way, than carbonic acid. And so uh, that could fall in the form of uh, acid precipitation. So one of the ways sulfur moves from the atmosphere into the ocean, or in the soil, right, is that acid precipitation, okay? Um, and the culprit for the acid precipitation is the SOX, the sulfur oxides, and it's very in those various forms in the atmosphere. Now, um, what contributes those sulfur oxides to the atmosphere is combustion of fossil fuels. And the uh, so combustion of fossil fuels, volcanic activity, activity, right? And bacteria in the ocean contribute what's called a dimethyl sulfide, which can then react to form sulfur oxides, etc. All right. Um, I promise I would keep this less than five minutes. That is the gist of it. 